We begin with brand new reporting about how top Republicans in Congress were privately pushing to get rid of Donald Trump once and for all, to try to punish him for the insurrection. And that gives us all a lot of insights, not only about hypocrisy, but about the road ahead, because America is still dealing with all of this, including open questions about who will be charged. They later publicly disavowed what, according to a new book, is their own beliefs. So let's get right into it. This is one of those stories, first in the New York Times, but drawing on a book by two of their top reporters that has a lot of big stuff. For example, reporting that Kevin McCarthy told House Republican leaders on January 10th, I've had it with this guy. What he did was unacceptable. Nobody can defend that, and nobody should defend it. From the forthcoming book, This Will Not Pass, McCarthy also claimed, according to the reporting, that he would go right to Trump about impeachment and tell him, I think this will pass, and it would be my recommendation that you should resign. Now, that is something else. This was right after the insurrection, but within weeks, McCarthy famously in reverse course with the pictures you see here. This was, we now know, something that, according to the reporting, everyone in his caucus knew that he opposed. It was a kind of final coda to this Trump era for all these Republicans who have to constantly pretend they like this guy. He knows they don't. They know they don't. And that's why it's all just about power. After all that, when he publicly claimed, well, he has Trump's back. I was the first person to contact him when the riots was going on. He didn't see it. What he ended the call was saying, telling me he'll put something out to make sure to stop this. And that's what he did. He put a video out later. Quite a lot later. And it was a pretty weak video. But I'm asking you specifically, did he say to you, no, I guess not, some people listen. are more concerned about the election than you are. No, listen, my conversations with the president are my conversations with the president. I engaged in the idea of making sure we could stop what was going on inside the Capitol at that moment in time. And the president said he would help. April was a long way from January. This reporting also shows how McConnell reversed course. Right after the insurrection, McConnell was telling advisors that Democrats are going to take care of the son of a bee for us, a reference to Trump. And he claimed that he had, at one point, what he would need to keep Trump off any ballot forever, the required 17 Republican votes in the caucus, because, quote, if this isn't impeachable, I don't know what is. Now, not only did he not have the other 17, or 16 or 15, he didn't even have himself. Now, you could say that's what a lot of politicians do. They canvass around to see where the room is. But Mitch McConnell, on a matter of the utmost significance, which he had called an insurrection on January 6th, ultimately reversed himself when tested. If President Trump were still in office, I would have carefully considered whether the House managers proved their specific charge. The question is moot because former President Trump, Trump is constitutionally not eligible for conviction. That is what the dry and even attempted boring spin looks like. They landed, as the book notes, and you may remember from when we covered the impeachment, they landed on something that nobody really believed, that they were so concerned about the procedural precedent of a former president being dealt with that they couldn't, couldn't consider his guilt. That's why McConnell called it moot. Of course, you can use whatever hypothetical you want. Imagine a fictional president dropping a nuclear bomb inside the United States and they're removed from office or no longer there. You can bet it is procedurally possible to say that person can never run for office again. Wherever the bar is, it exists, and it was BS to claim otherwise. Republican leaders, they wanted him out. They admitted it privately, according to this reporting, and then they publicly did the opposite. Now, we always want you to have all the facts. I've shown you how they've been back and forth, but as for the fourth of it, McCarthy now, in response to this reporting, denies it all, calls it all totally false and wrong. McConnell has basically spun his way around this before. He has not responded specifically to NBC and The Times for comment. But when you think about it, we are talking about the safety of democracy in America. We're talking about where these people will live in the history books, their reputation, what their kids or grandkids may think of them. We're talking about real stuff, but it is not surprising because when you peel that all away, this is where the Republican Party was. These are people who were so publicly, vehemently on record against Trump, it was clear they didn't even leave open the possibility that he could win the nomination, let alone the presidency. Lindsey Graham is nothing if not a careful strategist. People like Ted Cruz, who ran against Trump famously, and Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, none of them were thinking Trump could win. 
So they really let it all out there, how clearly they claim to oppose everything he stood for. Keep that in mind. The people who used to criticize Trump and who, according to this reporting, thought about trying to do so again right after the violent insurrection, these people today, as we speak to you live on the news, these are now his loudest supporters. This man is a pathological liar. The man ca cannot tell the truth, but he combines it with being a narcissist. Donald, you're a sniveling coward. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. I don't believe he's a Republican. His policies are really bad for the country. You know how you make America great again? Tell Donald Trump to go to hell. The nation's Ellie Mistal joins me and on the congressional investigations beat uh, Jackie Alamy from The Washington Post. Uh, Ellie, what is revealed here, given that these people's feelings and claims about Donald Trump, the danger he posed, the blatant bigotry and racism, to quote Lindsey Graham, was all there, uh, and that the insurrection seemed to briefly allow them to return to their pre-2016 selves and then cave once again. Yeah, and the words of the great Walter Sobchak, no, Donnie, these men are cowards. And we've always known that they were cowards. We always know that they were craven and debased themselves for Donald Trump. But I think what this reporting shows that we really need to start thinking about a little bit more uh, intentional with a little bit more intentionality in the media is that who are these people afraid of? Because at the end of the day, they're not afraid of Donald Trump. They're afraid of his violent base. They're afraid of the very people who attack them on January 6th. Because you don't go through all this. You don't go through all of this like literal bowing and scraping to a madman just because you're afraid that Donald Trump is some big scary man. No, you're afraid of his voters. And so what this means is that they know the way that, the reason why McConnell goes from yes impeachment to no impeachment, the reason why Graham goes from yes impeachment to no impeachment, they know that they cannot win Republican nominations if they impeach Donald Trump because they know what his base thinks. And right. so we have to stop acting like the Republican base is some kind of fringe lunatic sideshow. No, this is mainstream Republican par politics, okay? Mainstream Republicans are the people who attacked the nation and will continue to attack the nation until we as an as a intelligent society do something about it.